Ladies and gentlemen, we have just reached our cruising altitude. This is William Strong, your pilot for this ride across the pond. My co-pilot is Daniel Prentice. We're looking at a total flight time of just around seven and a half hours, which should put us on the ground in London, England, right on time. Forecast calls for clear skies, so sit back, relax, and enjoy your ride. You didn't get that haircut we talked about after your vacation. It's still within regulations. Barely. So are you doing okay? Okay. Here you go, sweetie. Thank you. Can't get you anything? Another late night party girl? Oh, shush. Checks are done. Been in the air a while. How are you doing? Just a few more hours, Heathrow. Hey, wingman, you're making me nervous. Something up over there? I don't know. Maybe short somewhere? <laughs> See? All you need is just a little. Come on, Daniel. Disengage your yoke and get it figured out. Gander Center, this is IA-42. We seem to be having some intermittent instrument problems. We're trying to sort them out. IA-42. Understood, IA-42. You're looking at clear skies ahead of you in all directions. Let us know if you need assistance. Will do, IA-42. Daniel, I can't fly like this, man. I thought you said we had clear skies. You had clear skies five seconds ago, IA-42. It popped up on our screens out of nowhere. Squawk 7700. Do you have any way around this? We're showing it right on top of you. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, please return to your seats. We seem to be... night already? Sunset wasn't for another 40 or 50 minutes. We didn't black out or anything, did we? Oh, nothing like that. Sorry about that, everyone. 
we had a sudden storm pop up there. Good news, we have passed the worst of it. It should be smooth sailing from here on in. You'll notice that while we're going through that storm, the sun went down. That'll happen sometimes when you cross the tip of the Bermuda Triangle. Don't worry, we'll catch another sunset tomorrow. The tip of the Bermuda Triangle? As good an answer as any. Jesus, you seeing this? I've got altitude, airspeed, fuel. But that's just enough to keep us airborne. Three quarters of a tank looking fine, but that's assuming we're still on course. You've got control, disengaging. Gander Center, this is IA-42. We've gone through the storm, but it seems that most of our instruments are out, require assistance. IA-42. Gander Center, this is London-bound IA-42. Do you read me? I'm not getting anything. Fuses are good. I don't know what's going on. Check the backup system. There must be something that's working. On it. Gander Center, this is IA-42. Do you copy? Still nothing. You? We've got one thing humming along just fine. Well, that, what is it? Our radar system. Only thing on the plane that wasn't replaced last time they upgraded International Airline Avionics. As long as that's operational, that's a step in the right direction. Hey, you're here. Oh, good, thank you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Can I get you something to drink? Oh, I agree with that. Sorry, were you standing there long? No, that's fine. What can I get you? A ginger ale. <laughs> it got dark early, didn't it? I'm sure it's just because of the storm, like the captain said. Thank you. So what brings you gentlemen to England, business or pleasure? Both. We're history professors at Echo University. There's a convention just outside of London. They've discovered some amazing pre-war artifacts and, and several very distinguished members you, of it. You don't have to bore the poor woman. Her eyes are glazing over already. No, that's fine. I just need to finish this side of the plane, but I'd love to hear about it, so I'll come back. I'm going to hold you to that. Get out now while you still can. <laughs> All right, about the, the Hitler map of Argentina. What are you working on there? Well, me. Just trying to keep track of everything. You see, when you get to my age, you have to stay on top of things because, well, you never know when you're going to get another chance. <laughs> well, I'll let you get back to it then. Thank you. I got some more good news for me. Take a look. There's nothing there. Not a blip. Is the radar malfunction too? I thought so at first, but the coordinates are moving with us. If this thing were on the fritz, it wouldn't be working at all. So we're flying deaf, but not completely blind. There should be some air traffic showing up around us. OK, so let's make a loop, try and find someone or something. We're all alone up here. Maybe the storm diverted traffic. We'll wait until the radios come back up. What if it doesn't? We're still a couple hours away from London. That's assuming that we didn't get turned around or blown off course. If we duck under the cloud cover, we may be able to find some visual cue from a shipping lane or maybe 
a message being relayed from a cargo ship. You sure that's the right move? If no one can hear us on the ground, that's the only move we've got. This is Cameron. Hey, Hicks. How's it going back there? We're all a little rattled, but we're fine. Good. I'll be making an announcement, and I want the crew back in their seats. We'll be making a descent. Is everything okay? Just trying to get away from some of this uh, high-level wind shear. Just get everyone strapped in, okay? Sure. Everything okay? We need to get everyone to their seats. We're making a descent. He says it's to get away from the turbulence. What turbulence? Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like everyone to get back in their seats. We're trying to get away from this turbulence, so we'll be ducking under the clouds for a bit. Pretty routine stuff, but we'd like everybody buckled in just in case. All secure back here, Captain. You okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Trust me, when you've been doing this as long as I have, you've seen it all. This is nothing. should be below us. It's such a big... Okay, so we got blown off course. You got us under, do you copy? Keep your eyes open for a radio tower. Leaking lights, anything. Radar says we've got smaller craft about 20 kilometers away. They're all bunched up. Are you sure that's aircraft? Never seen anything like that before. I'm not sure of anything, but we're closing in on whatever the hell this is. It's too hazy up ahead. Could be another storm. That's not a storm. It looks more like a fire. As soon as the captain has things under control, I am sure that he'll inform us as to Hey, I just want, I'm trying to get some answers, okay? As soon as we know what's going on, sir, we'll let you know. What? No! No, we want answers. Sir, let go of me. Sir, if you don't sit down, we will have to restrain you. Now sit down! Fine. Strong. Well, what's going on? We're trying to get a handle on this. Is everyone okay back there? 
Everyone's fine. Just confused and concerned. Let me address the plane. We'll let you know as soon as we can. Just keep everybody calm, okay? Looks like we're clear. Nothing anywhere close. I'm gonna keep on putting some distance between us and them. In a few minutes, we'll try to duck below again, okay? What? Well, that didn't work out so great last time. We also don't know where we are. Without instruments, all we've got left are the landmarks, and we can't find them from above the clouds. for that scare. We got blown off course a little bit because of that storm, but we appear to be out of danger. We ask all of you to please bear with us and stay calm. The flight crew is here to help. Sorry. No, no problem. How can I help? Um, we are actually hoping we can help you. Sorry, gentlemen. I don't have time right now. It's, it'll have to wait. My name is Bennett, and this is my colleague, Dale. My you can't be in the cockpit. Stop. Hicks, get them out of here. Roger, Brandon, we need to Captain, help. do you know what kind of aircraft that was back there? I want you guys back in your seat. They were Yonkers, JU-88, a couple of Hinkle AG-111s, sure. I've made it very clear. No one's made pop things like that since 1945. You have to listen to us. There's no way that those planes should still be flying. Gentlemen. You seem to be flying without your instruments, Captain. Are you talking about this? No, no, of course not. We, we can see they're down. We are flying without most of them. Everything that talks to a satellite. The radar is the only thing that's working. Complete signal loss. Almost as if there are no satellites. You have 30 seconds. Is your radio working? We're getting some static, but I think... But we're... you haven't been able to contact anyone since you passed through. Something like that. That's because there weren't many Allied radio towers on the Western Front in 1940. sleep. I can't sleep now. Me neither. That's odd. Based on the coastline, the plains, we believe we just flew through the bombing of Saint Nazaire. June 1940, massive German bombing on the west coast of France. I don't have time for this. Get this conspiracy theorist back in the That's seat. Fine. Wait, we can help you figure out where we are. If you dip back below the clouds again, we do know a little bit about the geography of World okay, War II. Okay, okay, You guys can help out. But get back to your seats now. Of course, Captain. And at a lower altitude, you'll be better off picking up weaker frequencies in the forest. I don't want to hear anything about time travel, okay? Let's just figure out where we are first. Even though it looks outdated, that radar is more advanced than anything the Germans are using at this point. Enough. Now get back to your seats. The point is, that radar will keep you one step ahead if we come across another one of those... Even together. if you are right, which is a massive, massive if, how do you propose we get back, huh? We look for another weather anomaly. If one of those things brought us here, another one should be able to bring us back. So we look for another storm. Will you get our new friends yeah. back to their seats, please? Right now, gentlemen. And hey, all of you, not a word to anyone, okay? Okay. We're having electrical issues. What about the planes and the bombs? 
I just don't want anyone to panic, okay? You want to handle it? Captain, we'll get through this. I've flown with you a million times. You never let me down once. Uh, you heard him, we're moving to a lower altitude to assess the situation. Okay, but what's going on? I assure you, sir, you'll know when everyone else does. Now please let go of my arm. Thank you. I promise you, if you touch me again, you're going to have an entirely different set of problems to deal with. any landmarks at all it's gonna be tricky without the 21st century light pollution there's you're you're certain that that was San Nazaire it was the only coastline bombing of that scope in 1940 all right all right give me some pencils schedule okay Let's keep an eye out for storms. Don't you start. Time travel storm chasing is insane. I know. None of this makes any sense. It will start to make sense once we know where we are. So let's focus on that for now, okay? Mayday. This is IA Flight 42 out of Dulles. Open transmission to anyone. We were en route to Heathrow and we got blown off course, looking for assistance. Repeat. This is IA Flight 42. Mayday. Is anyone out there? Over. You're clear for miles according to the radar. Let's try to figure out where the hell we are. Hey, over there. Is that a river? Uh, maybe. It's a sketch it anyway. This is unbelievable. I mean, right now, below us, the invasion is in full swing. If this really is June, Hitler is about halfway through the tour of his forces. Another week from now, he'll be in Paris. Shouldn't there be lights? Cities? Probably just a power outage. We'll explain why we can't hear anyone. Repeat. This is Flight 42. If anyone can hear me, please acknowledge. French, I think. Maybe those guys are right. Maybe we are in France. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is that German? Hello. This is Captain William Strong. IA Flight 42, do you copy? Violation of international airspace. Please identify yourself. This is Captain William Strong requesting assistance. Do you copy? Captain? Listen, 
Whoever this is, this is a localized channel to be used in emergencies only. Over. This is flight 42 out of Dallas. We've been flying blind. We think we just saw some German bombers. Bombers? We are claiming to be aboard an aircraft. Yes. Hello? My name is Corporal Nigel Sheffield. My position is classified, but it's my duty to intercept long-range transmissions. And it's simply not possible for you to be aboard an aircraft. Look, I don't have time to mess around. Can you just get us in touch with civilian air traffic control? We need to land ASAP. Air traffic control? This is a war zone. Anyone who can help us. Anyone! <sighs> right, Captain. What branch of the military are you with? We are a commercial airline. International. And you've flown through a German bombing run. No, absurd. Look, can you just help us get our bearing? What is your GMT? Fine, Captain. It's 17th June, 2130 hours. In the year? Uh, are you joking? Let's all just get on the same page, Nigel, okay? 17th of June, 1940. Did they not stop calendars on commercial airlines? If this charade is quite finished, I'd highly recommend you get off this channel and... Listen! I don't know if you're part of some sick hoax, but we are in distress. You're the only person we've been able to reach. Hoax? Well, certainly not. Now, kindly remove yourself from this frequency and... How do I convince you that we're a commercial airline in distress? I'm sure I don't know, Captain. Here. What has to be. Right, so if, if that's Ren, then then that means that. Oh, we gotta tell the captain. Come on. This is a hoax, Nigel, whoever you are. All we've got is our fuel gauge, altitude, and radar that's working at the moment. Your radar? You know, radio detection. Scans the skies, lets you know where other aircrafts and objects are. Well, that certainly sounds familiar to the RDF technology we Brits are developing, but, but I have nothing like that at my disposal. Well, that's the only thing that's keeping us up in the air at the moment. Captain, we think we know where we are. Nigel, I've just been joined by a couple of history professors. They think they know where we are. Uh, I beg your pardon? We were able to pick out a very identifiable river and surrounding hills. We, we've just passed over Rennes in, in the northwest of France. Based on the timing since the bombing, it's our best guess. Uh, we were relatively certain that we flew through the bombing of San Nazaire, where the RMS Lancastria was attacked and sunk. Sunk? The Lancastria? Even if that were true, how could you possibly... You're, you're gonna find this hard to believe, but... We were in route from D.C. To, to London... ...in the 21st century, and uh, we flew through a storm or something, and now... We're here! <laughs> this is high... Look, forget about that! This is what we know. We're up here all alone, and we're in a war zone. Nigel, we're gonna die without your help. What, what if we were able to tell you about the bombing of San Nazaire? What could you tell me? The Air Forces, uh, Junker Ju-88s, Hinkle HE-111s, Messerschmitt BF-110s, likely prototypes, and the Lancastria. Radio the front. They'll be able to confirm she was lost. Yes, well, I'll do just that. If you're serious, go back on this frequency in 30 minutes. We can't wait 30 minutes. Call us back in five. I'll do all I can. 
God help me. Show me the route. The two points you figured out. Can you become in the course? Hopefully. Then we can figure out our range. Just under half a tank right now. Ah, Sheffield. Colonel, a moment. Any news? One transmission, sir. You're going to want to hear about it. information that this flight crew has neglected to give us. Sir, I'm gonna need you to keep your hands off of me. And I know how this is gonna sound, but I believe that somehow we have traveled through time. <laughs> how many drinks have you had? We all saw that storm. And the, and the planes, the bombs, she knows. Somehow, we time travel back to the middle of World War II. Everyone, please stay calm. There no! No, no one is telling us anything. We have a right to know. Sit down. You're scaring everyone. You, you, you might not believe that we've traveled through time, but we're clearly in a war zone. So what? So? We're not gonna survive? This jet wasn't built for war. But listen, listen. Do, do you know what this means? Right now, as we speak, we, we're flying over France in June of 1940. On the ground, Hitler has joined his forces, and we, all of us, all of us, we have one opportunity to change human history. We can kill Hitler. Um, how do you propose that we do that? They tried to assassinate Hitler in the war, and they failed. Okay, during the war, they were operating on, on, on outdated intelligence. We, we know exactly where Hitler will be. It's all here in this book. Everything step-by-step, step, detailed information exactly where Hitler and the SS went. Okay, they will see us coming from miles away. It's suicide. It wouldn't work. We're, we're surrounded by bombers and, and, and attack planes. We're, we're probably not going to survive. <laughs> but we can land this plane, we can find Hitler, and we can kill him. Okay, that's enough. Whoa! Hey, hey, let, hey, him, hey. let him go! Oh. Hey. Oh, He's right! We need to take matters into our own hands. We can prevent the Holocaust. We just need to find a, a safe place to land and convince the pilots. Gentlemen! Stop, stop, stop. Stand down. I would think that you would be on our side, Sergeant. We can win this war. Or you could be making the whole thing up. But what I do know is that you're trying to hijack this plane, and that's an act of terrorism. I'm a patriot. Listen, we can do this the easy way or the hard way. But there's no way me and Private Jackson here are letting you take that cockpit. You think you can stop us? I don't think you want to find out. We could use you in this plan, Sergeant. You could be heroes. I prefer not to fight over this. Ah! 
that? Well, you're not thinking this through. No, sir, you're not thinking this through. Suppose we try it. It's easy to make a mistake, even when you think you know exactly where the enemy is. Trust me. Say it really is World War II down there, and we make one slip up, just one. The Axis will have this plane, the technology, and that book, which will tell Hitler everything. There'll be a Nazi flag flying from the White House, all because you wanted to be a hero. Now maybe we can change the past, but we can also screw it up forever. Now get back to your seat and shut the hell up. Yeah. Everyone okay back there? Yes. Nothing we couldn't handle. We can always tie them up, but I think the fight's at them. Isn't that right? Yeah. Uh, yes, sir. We'll keep them out of your way, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks yourself. You swing a mean fire extinguisher. Speed, we've got about 150 minutes in the air tops. That's not counting climbing or descending either. At least we know where we're headed. We do know where we're headed, right? We should be just about uh, in the middle of France. So if we maintain our course, we should be able to find some friendlies or a safe landing place soon, right? What happened? Some idiots on board tried to hijack the plane because they want to kill Hitler. Some soldiers on board helped to defuse the situation, but passengers are going to need answers. And soon. Corporal Nigel Sheffield calling Captain William Strong. This is Captain Strong. Go ahead, Nigel. So you're still here? I'm afraid you're stuck with us. And that was more like ten minutes, Nigel. Yes. <laughs> well, some things take time, Captain. I've told things over with command, as well as boys in the Western Front, and... Well, we're inclined to believe you. Not about the, uh, time travel, you understand. Your intel about the Lancastrians seems to be accurate. And the truth is... It's helped us out a lot. I mean, no one on the ground was able to ascertain the extent of the firepower, but... And the Jones would certainly not give up that kind of information. I'm glad we're on the same page about something, Nigel. <laughs> yes, well... We could do with any little bit of good intel we can now. <sighs> After Dunk. <coughs> Sorry about that. It's just such a bloody route. A, a route? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, Allied forces evacuated hundreds of thousands of troops. Well, evacuated? Well, have you all seen a newspaper? The Jerry's course from both sides. It was a bloody slaughter. Nearly half a million of us killed. Cut down. What is it? He said that Dunkirk was a, was a slaughter. That's not how it happened. Dunkirk was a hugely successful Allied evacuation mission. They rescued 400,000 troops. So if you're right, the past that you're in is not the one that we know. Sorry about that, Nigel. Well, Captain, I suppose the question is, how can I help? Right now we need two things. A safe route and a safe place to land. And also, any information you have on any unusual storms in the area. I'll do what I can, Captain. What's your current position? We're near Vire, near as we can tell. Just past Rennes not too long ago, heading in a straight line. You're nearing the German border then. What's your current airspeed? 400 knots. I hate to say this, Captain, but the first thing you'll need to do is change course. We've intercepted chatter on German frequencies. There's been talk of a rather large aircraft over France. 
So whoever is performing these bombing runs knows that you're here. Are there any friendlies in the area? Anyone who can get their eyes on us? Very difficult to say without knowing exactly where you are. What if we were more visible? How do you mean? We've been firing with our nav lights off, but we can turn on our landing and running lights. Are you sure about that? Most of our systems are out. They're analog, right? Here it goes. Geben Sie dem Ort Nigel, we've got something coming straight for us. Uh, one moment, Captain. It, it could just be allied. Well, we got company about 30 seconds out coming fast. Well, Captain, no sightings of, of any aircraft on our end. Gentlemen. I need in your seats now, and not a word to anyone. Get everyone secured. Will I? Now. Captain, just got word that some German activity is heading your way.
a plan? Yeah, kind of. Don't freak out. What? what? Keep us below 15,000 feet. Is that bad? Definitely bad. Probably have to cycle it again. Uh, Nigel! You got a problem, buddy! <laughs> Nigel! Did the radio get hit? No, I just got static. I think we're out of range. Hopefully. So, we can stay in cloud cover and stay safe, or we can talk to our friend Nigel and get shot at! And yeah, we can't land without our front wheels. Perfect! Captain? <laughs> Just give me a minute. Will, if the passengers know what's going on, maybe some of them can help. We have to work together right now, all of us. Daniel, can you find the plane? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I'm gonna need some extra hands just in case. Stay with him. Take my seat. Are you sure? I'm sure. Come on. Come on. Take your seat this instant. Keep us in the dark. Sir. We need to know if we're gonna die up here. I need you to come You haven't down. told us Please. one thing. That's gonna make Sir, you... we want you to keep calm and take your seat, okay? You. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your captain, William Strong. And it's time I tell you the truth. We're on the move, sir. Not you. We need you to stay put. Any news from our friends? Not much. Last I checked, they're in a dogfight with the Jerry's. I lost contact. I fear they... I'll keep trying, sir. If you manage to make contact, you'll have to gather information about their radar. Yes, sir. I'll do all I can. If this really is some kind of super plane, better destroyed than captured by the Axis. We may have no choice but to blow the damn thing out of the sky ourselves. I want to apologize for keeping in the dark for so long. We encountered what we thought was a weather anomaly, but it's something more than that. Some of us 
including my co-pilot Daniel, believe that we have traveled back in time. With the assistance of these men, as well as my contact on the ground, we've determined that we over France. These men believe it's currently 1940. That's impossible. Regardless, we are in a war zone, and we're all in danger. If we stay in cloud cover, though, we'll be safe. The most important thing you can do, all of you, is to remain calm. All we can do is fly and try and find a safe place to land. Do we all agree? As for the landing, the other planes that were firing at us have damaged our landing gear. It won't open. I'm going to try and fix it. But I can't do it alone. Is there anyone here who can help me? Who's willing to go below and help? Captain? I'm an engineer. We're working with hydraulics, right? That's right. I'll go with you. Thank you. Teresa. That'd be great help, Teresa. Anyone else? It's the minimum I can do. It's a little bit of mechanics. Yo los puedo ayudar. Uh, I uh, can help. I uh, handyman, as, as you say. Thank you, Mr. Hector. Me llamo Hector. Happy to have you, Hector. Thank you. Con gusto, Capitán. Much appreciated. We're going to head below. The flight crew is in charge. Daniel will keep us in the air. If there's any trouble, he'll contact me. We're done keeping you in the dark. Now we are focused on keeping everyone safe. Teresa, Hector, follow me. You know time travel is impossible, right? Of course I do. All the things are possible. If you have faith. No puncture. That's good. Captain, look at this. Maybe uh, we can splice. It's you! 
Landing gear is fixed. Oh. Thanks to these two heroes over here. How's it going? We put most of our fuel in the wanted with those moves. Got about 90 minutes of flight time, give or take. How's our coming heading? Should be almost to the border between France and Switzerland. Good work, Brianna. I'll take over. Okay. We need to contact Nigel. Tell him that we don't have much time. We have to go below the clouds. I already got shot once today. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, we will be making a descent in order to establish radio contact. <laughs> Nigel, come in. Can you hear me? Captain Strong. Nigel, good to hear your voice. <laughs> My God. You broke off contact so abruptly, I... I feared the worst. How on earth did you manage to lose those planes? We had to ditch them by going above the clouds. At least now we know what our radio transmission rate is. What's your current location? We are just about the Swiss border. We have about 80 minutes of flying left, which is not a lot of time to figure things out. Earlier, you, you mentioned something about, about a, uh, a weather anomaly. That's right. Before we got displaced, we went through the center of a storm, the likes of which I've never seen. Black clouds and some kind of a blue energy in the center of it. Right. I'll investigate. Now, the most pressing matter at the moment, of course, is your proximity to German airspace. I suggest you stay on course. I'm trying to find a potential landing spot for you. And my commanding officer is insisting that I get more information from you about this radar of yours. What do you want to know, Nigel? Well, everything you can tell me. Captain, may I? Sir, this is Bennett. The, the radar is in the nose of the plane and gives off radio waves to determine the objects in the area. In the cockpit, there's a, a console that looks like a bullseye, and it sweeps the area for, for signals and puts blips on the screen, and indicating our distance. That's about it. That certainly sounds simple enough. Also sounds incredibly useful. It's kept us alive so far, Nigel. Well, hopefully you Americans will get involved in the war sooner rather than later, and you can help us out on the technology front. Like I said, Nigel, we'd give it to you if we could. 
William. There's something else you should know. My commanding officer. Shit! We got company again, Nigel! everybody back there the passengers the crew a uh, few broken windows and everybody's really shaken but we'll be fine so thanks let's talk options we're stuck the radar only gives us a small amount of warning which leaves our windows to talk to nigel very tight that's because the radar's localized to us we're the epicenter of the signal right and can only track what's right around us that's right what if we had a radar on the ground one we could use to help us track enemy fighters that could be helpful, yes. So? Let's give it to Nigel. Nigel's story doesn't make sense, okay? They, they should have radar by now. It, the way he talks, it makes it seem like it's years off. Maybe this is why we're here. Not to kill Hitler, but maybe we bring radar to the British. We could cut it out of the nose of the plane, airdrop it to an agreed-upon spot, and they could hook it up and be our air traffic control. What about changing history? From what we've heard, it seems like history's already been changed. They lost the battle at Dunkirk. I mean, who knows what else is, is different down there? This could get them and us back to the history we remember. Maybe, maybe this can fix everything. Will, you may not believe in time travel, but you said yourself, we're out of options. Well, let's call Nigel and tell him he's getting an early Christmas present. Holy shit, a missile! Our radar. 
Think you can find us a drop site? Captain, Will, are you sure you want to do that? It is our only way to find a clear path to a friendlier sky. Will, you should be somewhere near Metz at the moment, correct? That's correct. We should be passing over Berlin Moselle in 10 minutes. That's right. I'll make down certain there's a platoon there to intercept the radar if you'll be able to make the drop. We'll make it. Then I have to sign off. Ten minutes, a field near the forest, in German territory. You can't miss it. We'll get it to you. Godspeed, my friend. Over and out. You heard him. Ten minutes. But if you and Daniel head down, take Hector and Teresa with you. Cut the box out of the nose. Buggle it, but they scream. Dale, we need to make this with ours and get a smooth ride. Make something that will make it survive a drop of about a few thousand feet. Oh, Jimmy. Ah, sir, you must listen to me. We can't make another attempt to target them. We have to help them get to safety. Nigel, we've talked about what would happen. They're going to give us their radar system. Airdrop it to us. The only way we can get it is if you call off the bloody attacks. Corporal, call off all surface to airstrikes immediately. Yes, sir. Immediately. Anything that we might be able to use as a parachute. Yes, Mr. Help. I'm looking for anything we can use as some sort of parachute. I think I think I can help. I I picked these up for the grandkids. No, I, I mean they live in London. Thank you so much. Power. I need a USB battery. Does anyone have one? I have one. I, I have one. of chatter. Wir haben es jetzt im Sichtfeld. Es wird ungefähr ein halbes Kilometer von unserer jetzigen Position landen müssen. Okay. 
Kid, go! Will, we've got the package. It's en route. It's en route to you? I'm the closest radio operator to the drop site. Nigel, you are our guardian angel. Guys, now. Uh, okay, Captain. Turn due southeast and hit the throttle now. Are you sure, Nigel? Yes, I'm sure. Now move. safe landing site. I can't be certain I'm reading this correctly, but there's a rather large blip in front of me. Is it another airplane? Should be rerouted? Well, it appears to be stationary. I mean, you, you should be able to see it. It's, it's dead ahead. What are you seeing, gentlemen? It's that vortex. The one that brought us here is the same one. We have to go through, right? We've got about ten minutes, Nigel! They'll try to have a suitable landing site for you within range. Well, all I know is that thing brought us here. And we can't make it to a safe landing in 1940. As much as I hate to admit it. This is your best option. Ladies and gentlemen, things are gonna get bumpy again. I wanna thank you for your patience, persistence, and your faith in the last few hours. I'm proud of each and every one of you. That felt like a goodbye. 
We'll find out in a few minutes. There's one more gentleman in the back, though. I'll take care of it. You go. Okay. Excuse me, sir. It's time to go now. Oh, j just one more moment, Captain. I'm just finishing something up here, okay?
dreadfully sorry to have kept you waiting, but I'm ready now. As I say, there's no time like the present. Shall we go?